What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Horror Nights Unscripted Episode 2. Here with Losh again. Say what's up, Losh. What's up, guys? How you doing? You know, me and Losh, the dopest co-hosts around. Back for Episode 2 of Horror Nights Unscripted. Punch. You already know how it be, Losh. We just did a huge collab with our arch nemesis, East vs. the West. <laughs> you know, the but only... The only Podcast. place you can get the dose of both coasts. Both coasts, <laughs> But uh, we did a, we did do a podcast with them, uh, a collaborative podcast, and it was it was fun. It was really fun. It it's uh, really crazy to see how we all came together and had fun as a collective group. And we we're also joined by Mr. Zombie Chris. And soon we'll do another podcast somewhere in the future with them. Soon. And, Instead of like doing like a creators come together, we'll do a Horror Nights Inscripted versus East versus the West. You know, Ooh. I, I don't know Ooh. how we'll do it, but we'll do it. <laughs> and we're also um, tell tell them about what we're trying to do right now with the podcast. Like, who are we trying to book? Are right, we trying to book everyone? Exactly. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no one and everyone at the same time. Exactly. We're trying to get some important people in here. It'll happen. We won't name drop, but we're trying to get some important people. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Losh is, Losh is working um, on his Orlando side of things. I'm working on a Hollywood side of things to book some big guests. Some maybe even a part of the creative side of Halloween Horror Nights. So we're trying to work on stuff. You know? Mm -hmm. um, we are already, this is episode two, and we're already making big moves. But I bet all you guys are wondering, I mean, I'm sure it says it in the title and thumbnail, what's episode two going to be? Well, we're going to be breaking down our mazes because Losh has never been to Hollywood. I've never been to Orlando, and hopefully Losh gets to come to Hollywood this year as I'm going to Orlando. So we're going to be talking about the mazes that we would have liked to experience from 2010 to 2019. Now, my first year was 2010 going to the event, and Losh, your first year was 2013. Yeah. 2013? Okay. 2013. So, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> figured we'd, we just start off with 2010 because it's like a decade thing, you know? So, we're going to be breaking down a, a house or a maze from each of those years from both respective events and kind of talk about why we'd like to experience them and kind of give like a small little history on them. Because there are some interesting houses on my list, at least. I know Losh has got some good mazes cooking up, as well as the Terra Tram. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to be doing that. If you guys are new here, subscribe to both mine and Losh's channel, which you can find, link down in the description, and follow if you're, watch or if you're watching on Spotify, if you're listening on Spotify, Horror Nights Unscripted, follow our channel. Um, what, else can they, what else can they do? Oh. They can um, keep watching all our podcasts. Yeah. Never leave. And fo Love follow us, us on social media. <laughs> oh. <laughs> do, do all that stuff. You guys yeah. already know. It's all linked down yeah. in the description. But today Everything. we're here for Horror Nights Unscripted Episode 2. And like I said, if you want to check out the East versus West, uh, click the link in the description too. I'm going to have to link a lot of stuff in the description. Yeah. And now, hopefully, if there's no technical <clears throat> difficulties, you can now see Losh's face as well. So you can see his beautiful face. His beautiful Cuban face, as Eddie would say from Eddie there Taylor. We go. <laughs> My 30 minute late face. And if you want to get the joke, late face. go watch East vs. West. Watch, watch the podcast, <laughs> East vs. the West. You know, why don't we give I promise this you'll laugh at least once. I don't know. Exactly. Are they going to give us promotion? I don't know. I, I know both of you guys are watching this. We better get some free promotion on yeah. this, too. Also, thank you guys for the feedback on Horror Nights Unscripted Episode 1. We did 600 Honestly. views, um, which is insane for a, a podcast that is new um, I know it's it's on our respective channels that already have a following but the fact that you guys clicked on it and actually watched it and were interested in it is is a, a big thing so thank you truly it was me and Losh thank you guys but now let's get into the juicy stuff Losh I'm gonna let you start off um, with their first Hollywood Ooh. we'll start from 2010 and then we'll work our way up all the way 2010. to 2019 so 2010, All right. what was the maze from Hollywood that you wish you could have experienced? Okay, so I'll give a story before I say it. So last right, you year, do that. 
Yeah, last year, there was a house I was not excited for at all whatsoever. And that house was House of a Thousand Corpses. Mm-hmm. And I went through the house, and I fell in love with the house. I didn't like the movie. I think I've talked to you about it before. I think we talked about it on either the first podcast or the first... I think we talked about it on the, Hornets, the first unscripted. Deep Exploring podcast. I'm pretty sure that yeah. you said that, like, you, you're like, wow, house is going to be absolute dog shit. <laughs> yeah, and then it was like, wow, it was amazing. So I yep. want to know how it would have been to go through House of a Thousand Corpses in 3D in Hollywood. Oh, yes. Now, I know there probably would have been black walls, but, you know, we're not going to talk well, about that it, much. I mean, back then, <laughs> back then we didn't have black Ooh. walls, to be fair. We actually didn't Ooh. have black walls. Ooh. So... Back in now, our day. the the black walls <laughs> meme came around around like 2015, I want to say, is when the black walls meme started. <laughs> true, true. But okay. I believe, where was, um, House, the 2010 year, I believe, was located in Terminator, Terminator, if I'm not corrected. I think it was located in Terminator. You, you guys we, had houses in Terminator? You, huh? Like in the queue? Like in the queue? Yeah, it was like, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but our Terminator, it was just like a big like facade, and then we had the Coke splash pad to the right of it, and okay. you would you'd wait in the Coke splash pad area, and you'd go around the back of the building of Terminator, and then that'd be the Pretty entrance dope. to the maze, so it was kind of like inside the theater, it really, it really wasn't in the queue as much, it was kind of inside the theater, like the back of the theater. It was a weird setup, okay. but it was one of my favorite locations. All I can say is that I, because obviously that was my first year, so it's hard for me to remember a lot from that year, especially just from like me remembering years in the past. In 3D, it's definitely, I don't know how I'd compare to Orlando's, because I didn't get to experience Orlando's, but as far as like the one that we had this past year, um, in 2019 for House, it doesn't compare at all. Like it was insane. Have you, you guys have had 3D mazes, you guys know how they are. Yeah. Right. I think the last one we had was 2016. Is that Lunatic? I like them. Yeah. yeah they're fun. And <laughs> I mean, House House in 3D was something special just because, like, I mean, it, the, I mean, we've we've all seen the movie for the most part. It's it's gory. It is terrifying. So it was, it was quite an interesting way, especially ten year old me going through that. Quite interesting. <laughs> but. <laughs> Is there any other oh, elements man. that you would have liked to have seen in that, like, if you were able to experience well, that? I mean, I just felt like it was a totally different experience. Kind of like, you'll kind of notice a theme here with my list, that mm-hmm. a lot of things that I experienced here, I would love to have experienced in a different format over there. Yeah. So it's just the sets, because I know it's two different types of sets. It's two different creative teams, so they could have really just expanded on the idea. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know, I, I feel like Murdy is more in-depth with the whole, like, bringing you alive in the movie. And Orlando does that too, but Murdy's more, like, of a fan of the movies than, like, the creative team over there. So it's, it's, it's a weird take on it. I feel like, yeah, I can see what you're saying, though. But moving into my 2010 for Orlando, which, I mean, this is obvious here. For those of you guys who have researched Halloween Horror Nights Orlando and have kept up with Halloween Horror Nights Orlando... They had a maze in 2010 for their 20, 20th anniversary, right? That was their 20th anniversary, I think? Yeah. It was the yeah. Hollowed Pass, which was an anniversary house. I said maze again. Damn it. It was an anniversary house. <laughs> and it like there was everything thrown in there that was related to past years for Halloween Horror Nights. It, it was insane. Have you watched a walkthrough of that? It was in the warehouse. Like, it was, yeah, it was in, supposed to be in the warehouse, and you're walking through, like, all the history and the lore. It's crazy. That's something I'll I want to see this like, year. Something similar to that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, and um, spoilers alert, there's already, and there's another anniversary house on this list for the 25th anniversary. <laughs> um, but so ho- here's the hoping that we get an anniversary house for the 30th anniversary. Um, I'm going to read, for each of these houses, I'm going to read, like, a little excerpt from the fandom like Halloween Horror Nights wiki. I don't know if you've ever been there, but uh, mm-hmm. it's like a Wikipedia page for Halloween Horror Nights. So, I'll read the first little sentence. Guests enter the house under the guise of the Halloween Horror Nights prop storage warehouse and begin by browsing through 
a wide range of stored items in the warehouse from the past 19 years of Horror Nights, while overhead posters and banners bear Roman numerals from 1 to XIX. I don't know what XIX is. I don't know what year that is. As, as, as guests 19? reach numeral XX, the warehouse takes on a mind of its own and leads you into a large open lantern, revealing a revolving tunnel featuring images of fears, minions, the past icons, Jack the Clown, the caretaker, the director, the storyteller, and the usher. So, basically, you got attacked by all the icons as you made your way through the prop warehouse. Which is, uh, like, they bring up in the banners and the Roman numerals when there's, like, an actual, and you guys can check this out, too. There's an actual, like, behind-the-scenes walkthrough of it that Mike Aiello did when, like, I guess, like, the media invites started, like, really rising in 2010 for theme parks. And... You know, mm -hmm. you can just see all the banners from past events. It's so cool, like the big long banners. It's so neat. Like, I would have loved to see that. And I'm Honestly. hoping that we get something like this this year. It's crazy too because, oh. like, uh, I heard with that house they did a they they brought all the props that they had in their own warehouse and just like you're basically walking through just a prop warehouse <laughs> and they just kind of like threw blood around and made it scary. It's a weird feeling. Like, here's the warehouse. Have fun. <laughs> exactly. It's like, go through the warehouse and see all these cool props, but also know that there's monsters lurking in there about to scare the hell out of you. <laughs> yeah. All right, go ahead with your 2011. Okay. All right, 2011. So, I kind of was torn between two things here, but I ended up moving one of them because it came back the following year. I moved one of them to the following year. I was torn between La Llorona because it was the first year they had it, and the Terra Tram. For Scream. Mm -hmm. I think it was called Scream for Your Life, right? Yes, yes. Alright. So, in 2015, I was teased with the opportunity to have Scream as a house. And it got <laughs> pulled from under the rug because, you know, contracts. Yep. So, we love that for us. And watching the walkthroughs of the Terra Tram... It's technically a, it's a walkthrough, right? Yeah, it's a walkthrough. Though it's a long yeah, walk. Yeah, it's a walkthrough. Um, Flow through, walkthrough, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's a, yeah, yeah. Uh, they weren't pulsing anyone, but you know, it's fine. Um, yeah, they weren't pulsing anybody. <laughs> the Seeing Ghostface Killer itself would be amazing. And I feel like that's personally the only, not the only reason, wow, wow. The main reason I'd select this as the one thing I would have liked to have seen in, ho like, in 2011 there you go well and it's it's weird because like we were talking about this before we got on the camera is that terror tram in specific was one of the actual better terror trams that we've had at horror nights hollywood because over the times as you hollywood fans know the terror tram just it was fading away and there's it's crazy i don't know if you see this but there's a lot of Hollywood fans that are like, man, I missed the Terra Tram because it was a classic. Like, Horror Nights can't be the same without Terra Tram. Like, they should bring it back. But the realistic people see that it was the same thing every year. Like, there wasn't much that they could I know, do with I, I it. I noticed you that know? in the videos. I noticed that in the videos. When you'd watch the walkthroughs. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was the same set. Well, obviously, the same set, but mm -hmm. it's the same scares. They didn't try to mix anything up. They just kept it the same thing. You'd walk through Whoville, and then you'd go to the Bates Motel. And uh -huh. they didn't try to change anything. Yeah, it was really sad to see it have its downfall. I don't know if you remember watching, but we used to have this hill. Um, it was right after the Bates mm -hmm. Motel, and it'd carry on to more like a foresty area. And then they cut that off, I want to see, in 2015. And after that, the Terra Tram just got kind of lame. It was already going downhill, but... Once they cut off the hill, it was like, why? That added like to the foresty feel <laughs> that you're getting dropped off in the middle of nowhere. But yeah, yeah. Scream was one of my favorite terror trams of all time. I, I'd say Hollywood Harry's my favorite out of all time, but Scream was definitely one of my favorites up there. That was I mean, Eli Roth, right? Eli Roth, right? What was it? Hollywood Harry. Hollywood Harry, was that Eli Roth's terror tram? Or yeah, that... e Eli Roth. Eli Roth made that. He brought it two years oh, okay. Yeah, two years um, he had it there. And the naughty bad doggies with big saws in their hand. I'm sure that's a lot a joke that a lot of you guys, a lot of you Hollywood guys will get. <laughs> Moving on to my 2011 
is Nevermore, The Madness of Poe. Now, the, the reason why I put uh, this maze... Or, damn it! <sighs> damn it! <laughs> and this is why damn. we're unscripted. Well, <laughs> this is, oh, like here's the thing, right? So we're talking about Hollywood and Orlando right now, so it's hard to differ the two. <laughs> um, yeah. So here's why I put this house on there is because we had for a couple years forevermore over here at Knotts, which was an Edgar Allan Poe maze, and it was interesting because I don't know, I just it was it's an interesting concept. You're taking a dude's pieces of literature and making it into a maze, and even though he was a dark, kind of grueling author. It's just, it's weird to put in a maze, right? Put in a house. It's yeah. just, it's weird, you know? And Nevermore the Madness of Poe, when I, I remember watching an old walkthrough from that, and I watched this walkthrough when I was, like, really young, because I wanted, I didn't know that there was an Orlando event till 2011. So seeing this, I was like, wow, we, we have that over here. I'm pretty sure that's when Forevermore was around. Let me see. Because I, I remember making the connection. Let me do mine research forevermore not scary farm um, no I was wrong okay I I I knew I knew I knew never never more from something forget what it was but I didn't know who Edgar Allan Poe was Oh, you know what I think I did? I think I made the connection after. I was like, I think I was like, oh, I watched that Orlando house, and now we're getting one um, at Knott's, and I was, you know, young Scott was like, oh, it's going to be the same maze. Oh, my God, it's going to be so cool. But then I realized that they're two <laughs> separate companies because, you know, it's yeah. dumb of me. <laughs> but <laughs> that's where I made the connection from. Anyways, okay. as guests entered the haunted house, they passed down – a hallway and into Edgar Allan Poe's writing studio where many of his famous stories ha were written while Poe wanders around murmuring the dark themes that are present in his stories with a wine bottle in his hand. Guests then move down to another hallway pushing past giant pages of Poe's work and are attacked by Lenor from Poe's story Lenor. From there guests entered a scene from the Telltale Heart where the narrator from the poem is seen going mad buying the burying the vulture-eyed man's body parts while hanging from the ceiling and walls in multiple places as the vulture-eyed man attacks from different areas throughout the room. Now that, I mean, that layout of the house is such a clever idea, especially for an author, you know, because Forevermore was, wasn't really like that. What other, hmm, I guess they could do Stephen like? King, huh? Do you think that they could do a, a Stephen King? Like, what other... I, are you big on authors? So so. I'm trying Not to think that of like, much, uh, yeah, because I'm the only really one that I know is Edgar Allan Poe, and that may or may not be due to the fact that it has a presence in the haunt community, but and Stephen mm -hmm. King, but Stephen King writes like movies and like books in his movies, you know. Yeah. So hmm, I don't know. <laughs> I think they could. I think. Oh, they could do a Stephen King original. That'd be dope. Yeah. If they could come up with some... St like, if Stephen King can work to make an original, because he has the the history of being able to make stuff scary. Also, the facade That's for true. this house was, like, a bunch of kind of like burnt beautiful. paint. I know. It's, like, it's so impressive for a facade mm -hmm. that early into the event's history. I mean, it was, like, burnt yeah. pages with his um, different literature pieces on it. And then there was, like, kind of, like, a mural almost of his face, like, in a shadow. Mm -hmm. Really interesting stuff. Yeah. I would have loved to experience this. And, like I said, the story of it, the way that they combine, like, the narrator and, like, him going crazy with the wine bottle. Even with the little touch of the wine bottle. That's insane. I don't know. I would have yeah. loved to experience that thing. Uh, I wish I would have been going that year. I think that year's the year they had... Oh, wait, we're starting? We're no, 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 go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, I think that year they had Winter's Night. Win Winter's Night. Winter. And every Winter's Night. Everyone, like, raved about that house. It was, like, uh, a cemetery. And it was in the middle of, like, the winter. So it was freezing cold. It was just an eerie feel to the whole house. Everyone always talks about that house. Over here. It's weird because, like... Yeah, and like like last year, jumping ahead a little bit, like last year, like I wanted to experience Yeti, 
Um, that's not my one yeah. that I, that's on my list, but like I want to experience a Yeti because I have such. I guess a lot of people do too. I have such a soft spot for like frozen winter mazes. I don't know, <laughs> except for except for the one over here in Knots that we had a while back, which sucked. But yeah, I mean, I'm different because Edgar Allan Poe in a, in a house, like, oh my goodness, I would I I loved Forevermore. It was a fan favorite here at Scary Farm, and I I love everything that about Ed, 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 Edgar Allan Poe's writings. There's so many dark quotes that he has and dark pieces of writing, so it's dope, you know. 2012 though. Was only... Here we go. Okay, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> I remember. I just remember an author that could. Oh, Maybe who work. is it? Lovecraft. Oh, yeah, huh. Lovecraft. Well, then, yeah. That would be an interesting twist. I don't think they'll ever work as an author again, though, which is unfortunate. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's sad, but true. So popular. Yeah. All right. Let's get to 2012. Oh, well. <laughs> 2012. Hollywood. 2012. Hollywood. All right. Another story, because why not? My first year was 2013, right? The first house mm-hmm. I ever did was La Llorona, and the okay. only reason I did it is because the year before and the year before, wait, no, yeah, the two years prior, from yes, 2011, 2012 I just watched the walkthroughs, I just watched the walkthroughs of La Llorona multiple times, and I was mm-hmm. like, I need to do this house first because I feel like I know the backstory now, and I'm going to love it, and mm-hmm. I honestly fell in love with the, like, the Hollywood version of this house, just watching it through walkthroughs. And if yeah. I'm not mistaken, the one in 2012 was like the one with the church Better. facade that looked like the face. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. And oddly enough, I don't I don't know if you've caught this a hundred times that I've said it, but La Llorona was my favorite ha- maze of 2012, of all well, of all time. That's my favorite <laughs> maze of all time, because the church yeah. facade was beautiful, like beautiful. It looks- so you you watch that on repeat a million times? Yeah, I watched that house a lot. I was like, this is badass. I need to go through this house. <laughs> and then I went through Orlando's version, and I was like, I don't know if it's because it was the first house I did, but I left, like, scared shitless. I was like, yo, this is terrifying. I don't know what Again. I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, yeah. Uh, do you Do you know where our maze was located at? Wasn't it? Were they both in the Shrek queue? I know one of them was in the Shrek queue, or by Shrek. Yep, the right? old yeah. Shrek queue, which was a really long maze with a small location. Really weird. <laughs> it was it was a quite a lengthy maze. And the one cool thing that I like about uh, La Llorona's presence at Horror Nights, at least for Hollywood in specific, is we keep reusing that damn head of hers. Of it was the it was the big one. Yeah. Because yeah. we had it in um, uh, All Hallows Evil last year. And it was like, it's the one of her mm-hmm. eating the child, but it's just her head. We keep reusing it, though, which is cool. Because, I, I mean, there's a lot of issues with reusing props, but that one in specific, I'm fine with, you know? So, yeah. I don't know. I nice miss it. And then, like, okay, we'll get to it in 20... 20- 13 but that was that's light on is the one that i'm talking about too um <laughs> but for tw- 20 tw- 2012 however kind of a unique maze um or kind of a unique house it's it's something that you never think would be a house and that's Penn and teller nuked vegas <laughs> it was like new but with parentheses kd vegas yeah. 3d it was a 3d house I don't know. There's just something about this that I like. I like, I like the concept of it. I mean... It sounds super dope. Like, like where else are you going to get a house like that? <laughs> so it's a weird... That, that's the one house it's, I was, like, a, shining light on when people were, like, worried about Billie Eilish coming to Horror Nights in Orlando. Uh-huh. I was like, but Penn and Teller, you would never think that'd be a good house. And yeah, it looked like, fun. It looked like such an... It's kind of like what you and said in the podcast like that. in East versus West, how people judge something way too quickly. It's kind of oh. annoying. Exactly, yeah. because people don't realize like you like the Universal Creative team knows what they're doing very well, and they obviously wouldn't 
green light a house or a maze if they didn't think that they can do it right. <laughs> so, yeah, accurate. this is it's insane. Like, and this is this is one of for those of you guys who keep up to date with my social media. This is one of the ones that I'm going to be talking about, like a history of. So there'll be a full video on this house. So I won't go too much in, into it on here. But the story behind Penn and Teller, Penn and Teller's house, is that in an attempt to enchant enhance one of their signature magic tricks where the duo catch a bullet with their teeth they decided to ditch their revolvers and instead settle for intercon <laughs> intercon intercontinental ballistic missiles unfortunately this souped up trick goes horribly wrong and in turn the city of las vegas is an irre irritated as a result of this botch penn and teller however were able to salvage what was left of the once thriving casino city and has placed it under radiation contaminant tents. So like the, the house title says, Ben and Penn and Teller nu nuked in Vegas. And the concept art for the logo has like the actual silhouette of Las Vegas and it has like kind of like those radiation green rays over it. I, I think they had the storyline perfect. I know some people yeah. wouldn't like it, and I'm sure some people like hate on it a lot. But you got to give it to Universal. That's a creative idea. And I don't and know if I'm not mistaken. I know, like, you... I know that like. What? What happened? Go ahead. I know that Penn and Teller made like appearances at least twice during the event, just in mm -hmm. the house. And I thought really? that was pretty dope. Yeah. That's so cool. That's insanely cool, actually. This was housed in one of the sprung tents. So for them to be able to do something as cool as this, and there's POVs all over the place or walkthroughs all over the place of Penn and Teller. And there was even mm -hmm. like these like slot machines at the end. There was like a slot machine room, which was really neat. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I went to Vegas a lot as a kid. But I don't know. <laughs> have you ever seen Penn and Teller? Yeah. Like, like the their, show? Their like work? their magic show? Yeah, like their work and just stuff in general. Yeah, they're pretty great. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see. Like, I mean, because they're two goofy guys, and this storyline is perfect right. for them. So now we're finally at the year that I started going. This is when you started going um, to the event. I thought, I thought it, yeah, twenty thirteen, to the event, to the place that's home. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, like I said, my first house was Lyrona, mm -hmm. an urban legend house. So I thought it would be cool to experience another Urban Legend branded house in El Cucu, Yes. Which, if I'm not mistaken, was it Trejo that did the voice? Yeah, dude, I watched the walkthrough for it multiple times, and I was like, this sounds amazing. El Kukui was like one of the fan and favorites that like, year. Dude, it looked dope. Like, it blew my mind watching like the walkthroughs mm -hmm. and everything. And I was like, this is a dope house. I would love to like experience this in Orlando. Yeah, cause I... something like this, please. But no, cause I remember like I think it was Murdy said that he was gonna do like an urban legend like brand and continue making urban legend houses, and then it kind of just stopped after. El yeah, Kuduli. I remember that. I can't remember if that was like in 2013 or 2012 that he said that. Well, yeah, and I was like, oh damn, that sucks. It, because the urban legends was I'd like, like such a good more. theme, you know? Like if they could do more experiences like that. It'll work out so good. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of urban legends out there too. Like, technically, if we want to talk about mm -hmm. Yetis, again, Yetis are an urban That's legend. That's true. There's that. There's Bigfoot. There's a bunch of urban legends out there that can be touched. Medusa. Well, I mean, Pandora's box. <laughs> was well, kind of not technically an urban legend. I, I but, guess. You know, I mean. Pandora's box is more like, <laughs> hey, let's make up our own god. <laughs> our own god. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what yeah, it looked like. It was, it was more like that. I, guess. Yeah. I had a friend that was in really? the house. So an actual scare actor? Yeah, he was one of the spiders. Oh, really? It's dope. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was a spider in that I house. remember um, yeah. when when I went through that, that maze for the first time, someone messaged me and was like, hey, uh, I scared you today. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> Like that's dope. <laughs> Did you like, though? Really? I don't I don't get Did scared. 
24, no, 2013. I don't know what scare is. Um, right, we're still. No. I was like, yeah, wait, I was like, wait, 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 wait. jumped ahead. Yeah, but 2013, 2013, Urban Legends La Llorona. As you guys <laughs> know, like I said on this podcast right now, La Llorona is my favorite maze of all time at Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood 2012. The version is after that would be Killer Cons from Outer Space. But I, I, I don't know. The reasoning that I pick 20, like picked La Llorona over any of the other houses that I'd love to experience is because this theme and this kind of storyline that Murdy created or Orlando picked up on has such a like cool meaning to my heart because you know your favorite mazes slash houses they just kind of stick with you it's like you that's always the one that's going to be like I I want to see every version of that I want to see it in a freaking scare zone you know all that stuff so <laughs> I there's nothing there's no other explanation for that um, since you went through the house, was there anything different from the Hollywood version that you could v- visibly tell? I mean, if I'm not mistaken, Hollywood had a little bit more space because ours oh, was really? in the sprung tent. So it felt a little condensed. Yeah. Now, I can't remember if this is because of my knowledge or not. I remember the one scare I got in this house was it was a white hallway. A black wall hallway. Towards the end of the house. <laughs> and I'm just walking. It was basically a black wall hallway. <laughs> but it was white walls. And I'm walking and I see my scare actor on the left. I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to get fucked. Mm-hmm. So I'm paying attention to the person on my left. I didn't know it was like a double scare. Really? I got and destroyed. What, was it actually, was it actually yeah. her or was it a different like character? I believe it was her, if I'm not mistaken. Or like, it was some kind of mask. Did, like, did you guys have um huge like, like sets in that? Because Orlando is known for big sets. Horses. Did you guys have big sets in there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. I'm trying to remember, that was like my first year. Jesus. Um. The sets were kind of, they were pretty big. They weren't like. As grand as they are. Wait, did now. you guys have a facade for that yours? But it was a pretty decent size. Yes. It was like a church. Uh-huh. It was an old church. And it had a wishing well in front of it. And at night, they do a projection of her and then make it look like she's coming out of the well. See, that's cool. I wish that we would have. Like, I, I still love our church facade, but that is cool. Mm-hmm. And one of the big things about stuff like that is. Orlando does a lot of special effects on their facades. Like, we do some cool special effects on our facades, too. But Orlando takes it one step higher, which is cool. And that's exactly why it's on my list. Because, like, it's interesting to see it from different perspectives. Obviously, even though it was, like, uh, mm-hmm. even though it was, like, a, a not, or it wasn't a knockoff. It just, they renamed it to Urban Legends, where ours was just the curse of La Llorona. <laughs> it was, it's, I'd love to see it in different aspects and i'd love to see a lot of be a theme at other haunts as well but now we're moving into 2014 yeah which is your turn for hollywood so i'm gonna keep my turn i'm gonna keep the trend going with original mazes this one has no backstory at all so something different mm. clowns i don't know if it was clowns 3d or if it was just clowns i know it was music by Slash. 3d but i remember when I remember when Murdy was talking about this house on Twitter, giving the backstory about Sweet Licks and everything. Mm-hmm. I was just all for it. I was super intrigued. And I've heard other people talking about this house, talking about the scents. I think this was like one of the last years you guys had scents. Yeah. Was it more or less? We had. You guys don't really have smells in the houses anymore? We had scents up until 2016, I want to say. Yeah, 2016. 2016? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. But yeah, so, I think it was like a throw-up thing, but it like smelled like ice cream. Yes. Like there was yes, in the yes, yes, yes. Yeah. The whole house itself looked beautiful. I, I don't know. I love 3D mm-hmm. houses, but we don't. We haven't had one in about four years now. I don't think we're going to get one this year. But I feel like 3D houses are so appealing to the eyes. They are. That's always fun to go through. And I feel... That's why I'm like... And a lot of people, like, overlook 3D houses, you know? <laughs> like, it's... 
I don't understand why they're so overlooked. They're cool mm-hmm. houses and cool mazes, but I, I can understand people's frustration is because, like, a lot of the times there are those good 3D mazes slash houses, but a lot of the times they're not that great in quality because they focus more on the, the eye-popping, you know, than mm-hmm. actual the sets of the maze, wouldn't you say? Yeah, for sure. It's, and like they spent. I agree on it. Cause go ahead. Even even though I strongly disliked Lunatic's Playground 3D from 2016, I still feel like it was a visually mm-hmm. appealing house. Yeah. Like the facade itself was amazing. The backstory was amazing. They just know exactly. what they're doing. Well, I mean, they're exactly. <laughs> and with clowns, I know clowns got a bad yeah. rep. But clowns and anything in a scare zone or a maze or a house, it's just it's such a good theme. If you're doing it right. So that's what I have to say about that. But for my twenty fourteen Orlando house that I wish I could have experienced was No House of the Damned. Now, when I so there was like I knew what Horror Nights Orlando was, obviously, like I said, I discovered it in twenty eleven. But I never really, like, followed with the event, and, like, it wasn't my dream to go. Like, it still is my dream, which that dream is going to be fulfilled this year. And I just want to say that, yes, that was my, that's been my dream to go to Orlando Horror Nights. And you, too, can make that happen by starting your very own YouTube channel and podcast. So if you want to make a podcast today, make sure to check out Anchor.com, which is our official sponsor of this podcast. Okay, back to the real stuff. (laughs) Um, uh, so this is like 2014 is a year that i really got into orlando and it's also the year that i discovered the tim tracker which he's always done a good job at covering halloween hornets in specific as well as other theme parks but his old vlogs like i just i I love them and i still love his vlogs but his old vlogs like they're classics they're real classics they had like a special place Mm -hmm. in my heart too they're just real classics and he specifically enjoyed dollhouse of the dam a lot and when I saw, like, the facade, I was like, damn, such a, like, weird-looking, creative facade. It was, like, bent. Like, the house was, like, creaking. It's weird. It was just, it was weird, but it was cool. Mm-hmm. And I was telling Losh before this, I have a special place in my heart for, like, dollhouse mazes. Don't call me weird, but it's just, like, it's creepy. Like, you can't go wrong with dollhouse mazes. It's just creepy. <laughs> so, the facade is a giant dollhouse with a bunch of doll parts scattered around. When you enter, you come into a room full of handmade dolls. There is a woman dressed in a Raggedy Ann doll costume that has been sliced in half. She serves as a distraction as a burlap doll jumps out at you. Next, you enter a nursery where baby dolls reach out at you from within cribs. Then you enter a room where a nurse is cutting off a man's feet. (laughs) So pretty like i said creepy demented whatever you want to call it just terrifying like i love creepy houses i love like the houses that have like obviously the big sets scares and everything but this is just downright creepy it's weird mm-hmm. really weird yeah but now that was that was such a memorable house it was fun a lot there was a chucky really? easter egg in there oh like a, like was there a chucky doll in there they hid chucky in there yeah they yeah, they had a Chucky doll in there. <laughs> That's great. I love when they do stuff like that. Yeah. But 2015, <laughs> Hollywood. True. 2015, Hollywood. All right. Correct me if I'm wrong. I might be wrong. Halloween. Was this the second time you so guys did it? So it was the second time that we had it in the, in the history of the, the event. But um, this is this is like the return. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like the, the big return of Michael Myers. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. Michael Myers comes home. Yeah. I remember Murdy was so hyped. <laughs> he was. That's all I saw him on Twitter. He was like, this is the house. I'm doing this. I'm killing it. And I'm like, all right, John, I see you. And then I watched the walkthrough. Because in 2014, one of my favorite houses was also Halloween. The fact that it was frame for frame from the movie. And the scares were on par. Mm-hmm. And then I watched the walkthrough for Hollywood. And I was like... That's pretty dope, cause it's kind of it was kind of like a decrepit, um, strode residence, and I was like, "Yo, this is." It, dope. It's so cool how they did the facade. I fuck with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then it like, 
at night they put like a projection on not like a, it wasn't a hard projection yes. it was like a light projection it was like yes it, it made it look it made it look it, yeah. it, it this, the little touch to it was nice mm -hmm. it looked dope. especially the ending with the like mirror scene and everything it's it really it. interesting i remember like walking through that maze yeah. and i know i've talked about this on the channel before but walking through that maze there was a night where murdy said that he was scaring and um, he was scaring in that finale scene, and he like tweeted it like, right, like like a couple minutes or like ten minutes after I went through the maze, and he was like, I was just in there, so if you went in like at this time, then you were scared by me, and I was like, I I went in there, and this is where I was still like a like a big a big fanboying <laughs> over Murdy. Now it's like I talk to him a bit, and like we obviously communicate through conventions and at the event and such. So he's a really chill dude. But back then, like I was fanboy and Murdy, so I was it was like so cool for, to have that experience. <laughs> no, it's weird. Has anyone? Uh, I mean, I know you said the Penn and Teller thing, but has any like creative team or anyone done that over there in Orlando? Like, been inside a house? Not that I know of. I know that before I Yellow started, he worked yeah. Horror Nights. Like, he worked on the SS Titanic. That was in like. 99 I want to say it could be way off 98 or 99 yeah. That's cool. It's always cool when they do stuff like that, but my 25 which, which brings us back to the anniversary thing um, 2015 Jack presents 25 years of monsters and mayhem the anniversary house of the 25th year anniversary in the facade of a big Jack the clown face <laughs> like I was I was fangirling like and I don't even go to Orlando like I was fangirling about it though I was so hyped it was like so cool and this house took a different storyline than the hollowed past did this was more like of a here's all of your favorite icons here's all of your favorite easter eggs here they all are in a one house whereas the hollow pass had more like of a tail between the prop warehouse and then you met the icons this one was more just like here is a, a house full of anniversary stuff that you will absolutely love and enjoy and it like it looked insane when guests walk into the house they are greeted with a giant outside area filled with giant revolving pillars with the icons faces and names on them you even enter through a giant painting of jack's face you then enter the jack-o'-lantern scene from the hollow. The room was filled with jack-o'-lanterns and vines and smells like a decaying earth. There you see a man with a pumpkin head from a boo hole. After that, you go through the Little Red Riding Hood scene from Scary Tales Once Upon a Nightmare. And here you see the Big Bad Wolf and Little Red Riding Hood. And then you saw icons like the Caretaker, you saw the Storyteller. And then you also saw like the legendary truth story. Like they shoved every it wasn't just icons, they shoved everything in here. Was there one part in specific that you loved from this house? The monsters were in there. Oh, oh my god. That house is still my favorite house to this day. So I would say the whole thing overall, but that's kinda of cheating. <laughs> I'd probably say the Forsaken Room was pretty cool. Was it the mm -hmm. Yeah, the Forsaken Room. It was the slanted boat. So you're, the floor is uneven, and you're walking sideways. Oh, what the hell? Hornets never does that. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, but that whole house was beautiful. Like, I remember the that was the first year that me and Nico started going together. Because I started going in 2013. He started in 2012. Uh -huh. 2012. And then, that was the year we started going together. And then, going through that house was just beautiful yeah I, was gonna... I wanted to do that house every single night and <laughs> i mean like that like house like drove fans crazy at least diehard fans drove diehard fans crazy it's insane how like much recognition that because obviously that was the 25th anniversary and like jack was back that was the year that jack returned right like it's a big thing and mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah he was, he was everywhere like chris said the podcast <laughs> and i yeah. <laughs> i wish that hollywood would do something like this like if we could do something like this i'd be all for it but unfortunately we won't Go hear, ahead. Me out, hear me out ready ready sweet licks mm -hmm. right 
versus Hollywood Harry in a house. Or we could do stuff like, um, or I guess we could do, because we do a lot of versus mazes. So Sweet Licks versus Hollywood Harry. I think that'd be dope. Yeah. I think that'd be really cool, actually. And you can have, like, because there's plenty of, like, minions around Sweet Licks and Hollywood Harry. So if you can mix them both in a maze. The only thing is, don't exactly. do that maze as a 3D maze. That'd be dumb. To be really dumb. No. <laughs> it has to be its no, own normal no, normal no, maze. <laughs> no. Yeah. You can have some neon lights in there for like for sweet licks, but don't give people three D glasses. Did I skip your twenty fifteen? <laughs> oh no we did we talked about Michael Myers. Okay, so twenty sixteen. No, we did twenty sixteen yeah, we we was my favorite Halloween Horn and Tears of all time. And I'm just gonna put that out there. 2015 was mine. Fair enough. <laughs> like, yeah. So I couldn't pick. I had two houses here that I was like, hmm, I don't know. So the first of the two is Krampus. Mm -hmm. Because I just love that movie. If you guys don't know, I'm a huge Trick or Treat fan. Trick or Treat was made by Daughtry. I said his name wrong. I always say his name wrong. And he made Krampus. And then when I heard Krampus was coming to Orlando, I was like, all right, cool. I went through that house opening night and I saw our snowmen and our snowmen were terrible. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's the truth. Unscripted. <laughs> and then I saw Hollywood snowmen and I was like, they look pretty cool. Like the designs, I was like, I like it. It's just, it feels like the Krampus in Hollywood seemed better than the Krampus in Orlando. And I can test it. What do you think off of like Walker? I can testify to that because I don't want to say anything bad, but I heard tons of stuff that Hollywood won that year as far as events go. Tons of stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I mean, our, our Krampus right. is on God tier. Um, that is my, if I had to rank them, then that'd be my third favorite maze. There was just something special about Krampus. I mean, we had the freaking the statue up on top of the Krampus facade of Krampus himself. Yeah, the facade was beautiful. They was so they nice. outdid themselves with this yeah. this maze, and it was insane to see it. This is one of those mazes that's just like you look back on it and you're like, wow, mm -hmm. like that that was insane. So I don't blame you for picking Krampus. It was such fun. Yeah. I saw that, um, but you guys started off in the attic, but didn't the, you? Uh, No, we walked into the house. It was like you walk through the front door because it was in the Shrek queue. Shrek queues never really have a facade. Yeah. So you walk through the house. There was like a reindeer light up Christmas light on the floor blinking. Mm -hmm. Then you make a right and it was the staircase. And you go straight into like the scene before the kitchen. So like the, the family yeah. room. There was like two or three elves. I just remember there was a bottle of Mountain Dew on the table. <laughs> I don't know why that's the one thing I remember. So Alright, so my 2016 house for Orlando, Orlando that I would have liked to experience is American, is American Horror Story. Story. Keep, in mind, Keep in mind, this is, this the, is only the only intellectual property, property on my list, list at least, because, because Orlando, Orlando just tops it in originals. So, American, so, American Horror Story, Story however, I loved our American Horror Story, Story maze over here, over here at Hollywood, Hollywood but, the but the American Horror Story, Story over, in over in Orlando looks so cool. It was so... It just it looks so cool, and the sets were way bigger. There were different scenes in there, there that, that we didn't have, have. there were different aspects, aspects in there that we, in there that we didn't have, and if I'm and not corrected, your guys' was a little, little, little bit longer than ours, than so that's also yeah. a plus too. There's not really There's much, really much I can say about American Horror Story, story rather, than rather than the fact that I just, I liked Orlando's better than ours, and I and I loved Hollywood's, but from the walkthroughs, I liked American Horror Story better over the East Coast than over here. But that dives us into 2017, which 2017 sucked for Hollywood. But I want I'm curious to hear what you you, you wanted to experience. So I was sitting there and I was trying to think what I would want, and the only thing that I can pull from this was Titans of Terror, because it's sort of like an original, but it also has yes. the Titans of Terror. And I was kind of jealous in a way when you guys got this, because like you guys had. Freddy, Leatherface, and Jason in a house. 
Now, granted, there was a lot of black walls. However, you still had horror. Yeah, there was. It's it was pretty cool the fact that it was wasn't it like a little kid who was like a huge fan of the three icon like of horror mm -hmm. and basically it's his dreams I want to say not his dreams his yeah nightmares. so it was it was like his night nightmare slash dream and he had like tons of tons of different um, horror memorabilia in his room Birdie was talking on his TV like a newscaster or some shit like that it's really cool it's pretty dope. Thing. But, yeah, but yeah, to your to your point, I mean, like, yeah, we had the black walls in it, but it's one of those mazes where you got to think, like, okay, does the positive outweigh the negative, or does the negative outweigh the positive? And in this case, positive did actually outweigh the negative, because the only thing I would have liked is I don't know if you noticed this, but I would have liked for the Jason scene to be a little bit longer. It, it felt a little short when I was watching the walkthroughs. It felt like a short. Thing. Mm -hmm. the, Freddy, the, the Freddy, Freddy, the Freddy part, part was definitely the best. The Freddy part was insanely good. Give me a second. So I was real. I was trying to think of why I could hear you a lot louder than I did normally. Uh -huh. I never put my headphone back in. Oh, nice. Nice. So we're gonna have an echo. Is this gonna be the greatest podcast ever filmed? All right. <laughs> It'll be better than the last one because the last one was like crappy audio. Yeah, true. Alright. Alright, all good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, but that maze, like, in general was pretty good. Like, especially since it took the theme of the event in general. And we don't really have themes here, so it was a cool theme. True. Uh, would you like to see them do that over in Orlando? I've always wanted to see it. <laughs> so, yeah. I'd love. I. I, wish I think that, they could really not. I wish it that out. Michael was included in it. That's the one thing I was really surprised about because the year before, didn't they have like merch? that had Titans of Terror and it had all four of them on it. Yeah, and then they were like, "Michael's gonna come back. Don't worry." But I mean, it wasn't that great of a maze in 2018 when he came yeah. back. But the only reason they pulled him out is because he was coming back in 2018. Which, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I would have liked to see him in there, but I. In the space that they were doing it in, in Waterworld, um, once you come down here and check it out, you'll see how small Waterworld okay. is. It's a really small location. Yeah. So, you got, I mean, you got to take what you can take, I guess. Take it with a grain of salt. Now, my 2017. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm curious about 2017. 2017 for me? Okay, well, you're going to be interested. Um, Dead Waters. Ooh. I like it. And here's 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 a here's a big reason why, mm. is that damn facade. That's that robo. Like, it's not a robo. Yeah, oh my god. Oh. It's a steamboat. steamboat there we go. I think steamboat. it is. Oh. It's. Mm. It was in like, the thing was huge, <laughs> and this is where I knew that Orlando was starting to get better than Hollywood. <laughs> the thing was huge. Yeah. Like you don't. You don't see that, even on an outside facade. Mm -hmm. That thing was insanely detailed, and, oh, like, I watched all the daytime, like, walkthroughs of it from the Rip Tours and stuff, and the detail put into that house looked that was insanely a lot of detail. impressive. And I would, exactly, like, between, like, the floors, the, the roofs, I mean, it was insane. And I really like the theme of voodoo stuff as well. That's also one of the themes I like in haunt events mm -hmm. is voodoo stuff. So that's exactly sure. why I like this house as well. Entering the steamboat, the zombified captain jumps out of you from a door to your left. You then enter a section where the floor is at an angle. A zombie jumps out of you from left and right. After the tilted floor, you walk down a hallway where another zombie jumps out at you on your right. You then enter a room with a door on your right with a hole in it. A zombie again jumps out at you from behind that door and then to the right of you. So there's tons of voodoo zombies in here. Also, if you can testify to this, was a lot of the house like walking sideways? Not a lot of it. You'd walk into the boat and then, if I'm not mistaken, that for, there's like two hallways and then the slanted room and then it went back to normal. But it was pretty, it was pretty good. Well, nonetheless, even... Pretty good. 
pretty good like duration of slantedness. Yeah. It messed with your equilibrium. Which even then it's like it's insane. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it throw you off a lot. Mm -hmm. But it, it's insane because you don't see that in in a, an experience at Halloween mm -hmm. Horror Nights. It's like you tilting. You see that at somewhere like a, a home haunt or like a, a local haunt. Yeah. So it's cool that Horror Nights did something like that. But now we're getting even closer to the present day, which <laughs> is 2018. 2018 Hollywood event for you, Lost. 2018? I don't think there's anything else that I could pick. Honestly, it's Universal Monsters. Yeah. I, I don't think I really have to say much. You have it there, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have to say much, because you guys in Hollywood know that that house is impressive. We in Orlando know that that house is beautiful, and, and, based on walkthroughs. And it's basically Murdy another one of Another one of those mazes that Murdy was hyping up. What happened? What's up? Hello? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you cut out. No, no. Um, but Murdy did hype that up so much. Like, he was all over Twitter talking about how amazing it was. I mean, he dedicated all of his Scare LA panel to talk about Universal Monsters. And props to him, he delivered. But the addition of Slash? Wow. You, you guys didn't have Slash, No, right? we just had, like... There really wasn't music. There was, like, themed... Like, a themed score to every room. So... Oh, well, at least there was still a score there. But yeah, you definitely have to check it out with Slash. Like, it was insane. It was absolutely insane. And like you said, there's not much to say about it because everyone here in Hollywood knows how great it was, and I'm sure everyone in Orlando knows how mm -hmm. great it was, too. So, that is Lasha's favorite right it there. It is what is it is. Universal <laughs> Monsters. It is it what is it is. <laughs> um, my 2018 was one that everybody talked about. Which was Scary Tales, Deadly Ever After. Uh, Scary Tales was, it looked like such an interesting house. And if I'm not correct, this is the one where the witch was jumping off of her little thing, right? Yeah, or she, was she just standing she was, there? Um, she was on the little castle that was there, and then she'd run up, she'd fly around. She'd like run off and fly around. Like, that was the facade. See, that's insane that, like. And this was, it wasn't, it wasn't South And it looked like such a big and like. I want to say, or B. It had a lot of space. And like I said, it was so aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. Like, there was so much lighting in there and everything, and yeah. so, like, it was just so, it looked so nice. And it was also another one of those ones that was on the Rip Tour, so I was able to see behind-the-scenes pictures of it, which we're not able to see over here in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Um, entering the castle, guests would go down a small corridor where sometimes the scarecrow would jump out of a boo hole. Exiting the corridor, guests entered a dungeon where they would see Dorothy chained up crying, wishing she would go home. So, if I'm not corrected, this was scary tales, was like not fairy tales, but scary yeah. tales, exactly what it is, yeah, right? Exactly. I, I remember people and, said that Dorothy was there, I never saw it. Like, Really? I think it was a mannequin that was on the floor, maybe, like in a cell. In a cell. Well, I can't speak. I was more focused on the Tin Man and the Scarecrow. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Scarecrow would have been dope to see because it was almost. It took a little bit of like that that Wizard of all, Wizard of Oz theme mm -hmm. too, especially with the Wicked Witch of the West yeah. in the very beginning. Um, there is also the Cowardly Lion, Hansel and Gretel, the three little pigs, Rapunzel. Those pigs, those pigs screwed yeah, me up. I wasn't. I was, I was, <laughs> what, like, what were they? Were they puppets? The or pigs? Were they? The pigs were full-size uh -huh. people. Like, they were bigger than me. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. And they had, like... What about what about Humpty Dumpty? Humpty Dumpty, it wasn't really Humpty Dumpty. It was uh, basically a sculpture of Humpty, and then it was like guards just throwing up, and you get hit with water when they hit their trigger, and you just feel like. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, oh, that's gross. It smelled <laughs> disgusting in that room too. That's interesting yeah. though. That was actually the first house that's I did cool, that though. year. Like, I it mean, was my girlfriend's like, it... first house. Fun fact. Scary yeah. tales. 
Well, it's I, I find it so amazing that Orlando's able to come up with ideas like this. Like, an idea like that is insane. Mm -hmm. So insane. 2019, our final year. Which maze would you have liked to experience last year over here at Hollywood? All right, so I was torn between two again. One being an original and one being an IP. But I'm, I'm going to lean mm -hmm. with the IP on this one. I'm going to go with Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Only because, one... I can't hear enough from everyone saying how good it was over there, and I actually genuinely enjoy the movie, and I enjoyed the scare zone the year prior and the house that we had here. A lot of people didn't love the house we had this year for Killer Clowns, but I really liked it. They thought it was kind of annoying and short, but I felt like it was the right thing. But you guys over there, you guys had a lot of sets, and it was vibrant. It was beautiful. And something that we did is something that we never really do is we focus big, like on big sets mm -hmm. and like sets that really like bring you into the movie um, like Orlando does. Whereas, I mean, I gotta, I gotta say it like I, from the walkthroughs, I mean, I get it because there's the fans like me and you, right? Who like Killer Clowns from Outer Space and that movie is so near and dear to our hearts. So yeah. you're gonna like it no matter what. In my personal opinion, it didn't look that great compared to Hollywood's. And I always give Orlando credit to their houses, but it's just, it looked like two completely different mazes oh, slash sure. houses. For so sure. it was weird. But the the general consensus was that ours was better, but your guys' Clownzilla was fucking insane. Okay, fun, fun story about Clownzilla. Opening weekend, we were walking through and Nico noticed that Clownzilla's nose wasn't attached. It was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> and we had to go back through the house to see it again. And he didn't have his nose. And I was like, how is he alive? How, how is this man living right now? <laughs> and then we went through like a week later and it was on. I was like, okay, thank you. Thank you for giving him his life back. That's so funny. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because it, like I said, it's it's one of those things that the movie, if the movie means so much to you, then you're going to like both yeah. of them. Um, when we did our podcast with John Masari, who's the music composer for the movie, he was saying, like, I can't pick which one's better because I love both of them. And they both truly mean so much to my heart. And I feel like that's the same with me in a sense. But I don't know. I just, I guess I'm just too spoiled by what's a good maze and what's not a good yeah. maze. So, I don't know. I guess that's just me. True, I feel <laughs> And uh, that was in Shrek? Yeah, it was in Shrek. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I I feel like there's a better place for that house, maybe even in I a thought, sprung I thought tent. Sprung would have been perfect for I, it. I think, uh huh, yeah. because then you could do like a, a, fa a facade like we did, yeah. like a tent. Yeah. <laughs> like ours, I hated the fact um, that they had like streamers, as like you would walk in. Oh my god, that looks so ghetto. And that's the one thing that they, I really didn't like. Fall, that looks so ghetto. Off. People kept yanking them down. I'm like. Just put nothing really? in this room. Just let oh us go God. through. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. But uh, 2019 for me, and this will be the last maze that we talk about, or the last house that we talk about, is, of course, Graveyard Games. Come on. How can it not be Graveyard Games? It looked insane. The theme of it. The storyline to it, the fact that you guys had projections yeah. on the actual show building of it, like of seeing like the rude tweets that the crappy teenagers were tweeting out and kind of set up the story of these teenagers in a graveyard and them messing around and shit. It was, it's so cool. What was your favorite part about the house? So, there was a room. Oh, what, what did she say? Oh, okay. I can't remember what she said, but... It was a hallway. It reminded me of La Llorona. That's the whole reason it scared, like it terrified me. You're walking through the hallway, and then a gust of wind mm -hmm. comes from the back, all the way to the front as candles blow out, all the way forward. And when the last light goes out, there's a scare on your right. Oh my god! It's beautiful. It's like towards the end of the house. It's right before there's like the kids' room, mm -hmm. like where they're, where they're like just singing. It's like a purple hue. It goes on and off. Right before that, it's that room. The light just goes click, click, yeah. click, scare, back, scare again, and then go on. It's so, it's a well done scare. And 
I, I think you bring up a good point there. It was so much like La Llorona. It just had that vibe mm-hmm. to it that that's one of the big reasons why it was so enjoyable in a way, wouldn't you yeah. say? Yeah. No, it wasn't my favorite house. Yeah. But it was good. <laughs> it wasn't. Well, I mean, house house was your favorite yeah, house. Yeah, house was my favorite house. <laughs> Not maze. House. But that... <laughs> Yeah, but see we had we had house over here so i mean i had to pick a different one you know yeah. <laughs> true true so i pick i pick graveyard games um that does it for episode two of halloween horn no not halloween horn nights horror nights unscripted this has been losh tv and this has been socal exploring yes, at your service providing you with entertainment regarding halloween horn nights and Halloween Horns in general, be sticking around. Subscribe to both of our channels because and follow us on all socials, all linked down in the description. Because there's gonna be some big episodes coming out. I think this is turning into more of a, a more frequent thing than yeah. we actually thought it was gonna be yeah. right lost. At first we were like, oh yeah, monthly. And then I was like, oh no, bi weekly, and now it's yeah. literally feels like it's weekly. So I'm yeah. okay with it. <laughs> yeah, now it's like yeah, now it's like, like I'll hit Lasha over Lasha will hit me up and be like, hey, let's do this. I'm like, all right, let's do it um, Friday or whenever. <laughs> so you guys will be seeing a lot more, and I hope you guys are enjoying them. Thank you guys for the feedback. Truly, the first episode was absolutely phenomenal with the feedback that we got, and I'm so grateful for all of you that tuned in and the ones who are tuning in right now. As always, follow our Spotify, subscribe to both of our channels. My name is Scott. I'm Adrian. And we are Horror Nights Unscripted. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody. Be safe.